Kids Winter Kitchen. Hey everyone, my mom and I are getting food ready for winter, and we'd like you to help us. This summer, we collected our traditional foods, taking only what we needed. To get ready for the winter, we'll preserve the foods, which means that we prepare them so they stay yummy and nutritious for a long time. Tap the food you want to preserve with us. Blueberry jam. Looks like we have everything we need to get started. This is gonna be fun. Tap to get started. Connie picked these berries from her favorite spot. Let's clean them by taking away all the sticks and leaves. Gwinzy! Good! Next, put the blueberries in the pot. Whoa! Once the berries are in the pot, mash them up to make them mushy. Lindsay, good. Next, add the sugar to the pot. Then, add the lemon juice. Lemon juice adds a tangy taste. And put in the pectin powder. Pectin helps make it thicker and more like jelly. Then, stir everything together while it cooks. Awesome! After the jam is cooked, pour it into the jar. We boiled our jars to clean them. Great! Put on the lid. And spin the lid to close it. We're almost done. Put the jars in boiling water to tighten the lids and make sure no air comes in. This helps the jam stay fresh. We made blueberry jam to save for winter. And Connie stopped by to pick up some jam. Masi Connie for giving us blueberries to help us make it. Sharing is one of our Gwich in values. It has helped our people for thousands of years. Tap the food you want to preserve with us. Jarred salmon. We don't have any firewood. Can you find out who might have some? Here, you can look at this book of biographies to find out. It's all about the people who live in Kaya. Which person is more likely to have firewood? William Patuk owns the wood shop in the village. He can carve all kinds of things out of wood. He shares older wood he doesn't need with his neighbors to use as firewood. Trini Mumford is seven and used to live in Texas. She grows lots of vegetables in her garden and has won a gardening prize at the Alaska State Fair. Who do you think has firewood? That's right! Mr. Paduk has the firewood we need. I'll go get some and meet you back here. Masi Cho, now we have everything we need to turn fresh salmon into jarred salmon. Tap to get started. First, cut the salmon in half with our traditional knife, called an ulu. It's good to have a grown-up's help when you're using a knife. Next, slice each half, but leave some space at the top. This creates a special shape so you can hang up the salmon later. 
Then make a brine, a salty water, to help with preservation and flavor. First, put the water in the bucket. Next, add the brown sugar for flavor. Add the salt, which helps with preservation. A coat A! All done! When the brine is ready, add salmon to the bucket. Add all the salmon to the bucket. Mizzy! Nice! Next, move the salmon strips to the drying rack. Add all of the pieces to the rack. Keep going! Almost done! Add the last one! Now, to make smoke, move the wood to the fire pit. Light the fire. I can help with this part. Wait a day or two while it smokes. The salmon is done smoking. Add the cut up pieces to a clean jar. The salmon is a beautiful color, so we make sure the meat is facing out. Put on the lid. And spin the lid to close it. We're almost done. Put the jars in boiling water to tighten the lids and make sure no air comes in. This helps the salmon stay fresh. Yay! We made jarred salmon to save for winter. And Mr. Patuk stopped by to pick up some salmon. Merci, Mr. Patuk, for giving us firewood to help us make it. Sharing is one of our Gwich Inn values. It has helped our people for thousands of years. Tap the food you want to preserve with us. Moose stew. We don't have any moose meat. Can you find out who might have some? Which person is more likely to have moose meat? Midge Ellick is the tribal chief of Kaya, and she keeps very busy. Every year, she taps the birch trees in the village to collect their sap. Daniel Mumford is the village librarian. He learned to hunt and fish when he moved to Kaya and enjoys eating moose and salmon. Who do you think has moose meat? That's right! Daniel has the moose meat we need. I'll go get some and meet you back here. Musi Cho! Now we have everything we need to turn moose meat, din jik, into moose stew. Tap to get started. First, cut the moose meat into bite-sized pieces with our traditional knife called an ulu. It's good to have a grown-up's help when you're using a knife. Mizzy! Nice! Then add the water to the pot. Then add the spices. We like to use garlic, salt, and pepper. Last, add the meat to the pot. Oh, cool! Stir everything together. A coat A! All done! While that's cooking, chop the onions. Mizzy! Nice! Next, add the onions to the pot. A lie! Whoa! We have potatoes and carrots, so that's what we'll use today. Chop the carrots. Mizzy! Nice! Add the carrots to the pot. A lie! Whoa! Chop the potatoes into small pieces. Oh, cool! Add the potatoes to the pot. Great! Then 
then add your favorite pasta to the pot. We like macaroni. A lie! Whoa! Now stir it all together again. Awesome! Once the stew is done, pour it into a clean jar. A lie! Whoa! Put on the lid. And spin the lid to close it. Oh, cool! We're almost done. Put the jars in boiling water to tighten the lids and make sure no air comes in. This helps the stew last all winter. We made moose stew to save for winter. And Daniel stopped by to pick up some stew. Must see Daniel for giving us moose meat to help us make it. Sharing is one of our Gwich Inn values. It has helped our people for thousands of years. Tap the food you want to preserve with us. Pickles. We don't have any cucumbers. Can you find out who might have some? Which person is more likely to have cucumbers? Daniel Mumford is the village librarian. He learned to hunt and fish when he moved to Kaya and enjoys eating moose and salmon. Training Mumford is seven and used to live in Texas. She grows lots of vegetables in her garden and has won a gardening prize at the Alaska State Fair. Who do you think has cucumbers? That's right! Dreamy has the cucumbers we need. I'll go get some and meet you back here. Masi Cho! Now we have everything we need to turn cucumbers into pickles. Tap to get started. Fresh cucumbers from the garden sometimes have dirt on them. First, use a brush to clean them off. Slice the cucumber into thin circles with our traditional knife called an ulu. It's good to have a grown-up's help when you're using a knife. Mizzy! Nice! Make a brine, a salty water, to help with preservation and flavor. First, add the water. Then, add the vinegar. Next, add the salt. Last, add the sugar to the pot. Yeah! Stir the brine while it cooks. A coat A! All done! While the brine cools down, fill the clean jar. Add the cucumbers. Add the dill. Great! Then pour in the brine so it covers all the cucumber slices. Oh, cool! Put on the lid. And spin the lid to close it. We're almost done! Put the jars in boiling water to tighten the lids and make sure no air comes in. This helps the pickles stay fresh. We made pickles to save for winter. And Trini stopped by to get some pickles. Masi Trini for giving us cucumbers to help us make it. Sharing is one of our Gwich Inn values. It has helped our people for thousands of years. Tap the food you want to preserve with us. Birch syrup. We don't have any birch sap. Can you find out who might have some? Which person is more likely to have birch sap? Midge Ellick is the tribal chief of Kaya, and she keeps very busy. Every year, she taps the birch trees in the village to collect their sap. Connie Williams runs the auto repair shop. She also grows a lot of her own food and knows a great spot to pick blueberries. Who do you think has birch sap? That's right! Auntie Midge has the sap we need. I'll go get some and meet you back here. Musty Cho, now we have everything.
everything we need to make syrup from at o h birch trees. Tap to get started. First, put the filter into the pot. The filter helps remove things we don't want in our syrup. Next, pour the raw sap into the filter. The sap is the sugary water that comes out of the birch tree. You need a lot of sap to make even a small amount of syrup. We need to make a fire to heat up the sap. Move the firewood under the pot. Light the fire. I can help with this part. While it boils, skim the sap to get rid of any sugary scum that forms. After a long time, a few hours, the sap boils down and turns into thick, sweet syrup. Stir the syrup while it cooks. Keep cooking until it gets very hot. The syrup is done. Add it to the clean jar. Put on the lid and spin the lid to close it. The syrup is so hot that the lid seals themselves closed. That helps the syrup stay fresh. Yay! We made birch syrup to save for winter. An auntie Midge stopped by to pick up some syrup. Matsi auntie Midge for giving us sap to help us make it. Wow! Look at all the different foods we preserved together. We worked hard this summer so we could have food to nurture us all winter, just like our ancestors. We're so thankful to the earth that we're able to have all this food that we can share with our friends and family.